Your day of going home is approaching, and we are excited and happy for you and your family. The following video provides needed information for taking care of your baby at home and for helping you to have a successful transition to the home environment. Please feel free to ask your nurse any questions you may have after viewing the video. Congratulations again. Your baby should have only formula or breast milk for the first four to six months of life. After that, advance infant's diet at the recommendation of your pediatrician. If you are breastfeeding your baby, feed on demand or 10 to 12 times in 24 hours. If you have any questions, you may contact lactation nurse at 731 541 2229. You may need to awaken your baby for feedings during those first few weeks at home. Always hold your baby during feeding times and never prop the bottle for feedings. Some spitting up is common with feedings. However, if your infant has forceful or dark green or bloody spit up, call your pediatrician. Changing the diaper before each feeding helps wake the baby to eat and provides comfort during feeding time. Clean the diaper area with a baby wipe or a warm, damp washcloth with each diaper change. Your baby should have six to eight wet diapers each day. Call your pediatrician if your infant has no wet diapers in 24 hours. Bowel movements will vary. If your baby has gone three days without a bowel movement, please contact your pediatrician. Bowel movements should not be watery or loose unless your baby is breastfeeding. Call your pediatrician if this happens. You may notice that newborn girls may have a small amount of whitish discharge or blood-tinged mucus from the vagina in the first few weeks. This is a normal occurrence related to the mother's hormones. Care of the circumcision site should include cleaning and protecting the site from infection and irritation. If your baby was circumcised using the Gomco Mogan method, a Vaseline gauze will be wrapped around the circumcised penis. If your baby is discharged home before the circumcision is 24 hours old, the gauze should be removed in the following manner at home. Soak the gauze with warm water and a washcloth. Gently begin to unravel the gauze from around the penis. The dressing should come off easily. If resistance is met, stop and wet the gauze with more warm water and unravel the gauze. You may notice a small amount of bleeding once the gauze is completely removed. The tip of the penis may be red, slightly swollen, and tender for the first few days after circumcision. Yellowish oozing is perfectly normal. It just means the body is sending healing fluids to the area. Keep the surgical site clean and dry. With each diaper change, the penis can be gently cleaned with a warm, damp cloth. Apply Vaseline around the tip of the penis or in the diaper for at least seven days. The Vaseline is not necessary for healing, but it keeps the surgical site from sticking to the diaper and causing irritation and bleeding when the diaper is removed. Tub bath is allowed when the area is healed and the umbilical stump has fallen off. If your baby was circumcised using the Plastibel method, a plastic ring is left on the penis after the circumcision. The plastic ring usually falls off within five to eight days and no special dressing is necessary. A dark brown or black area around the plastic ring is normal and will disappear after the ring drops off. Clean the ring with warm water when bathing your baby and keep the area clean and dry. Tub bath is allowed when the plastic ring falls off and the umbilical stump falls off. 
Call the baby's health care provider if you notice bright red blood in the baby's diaper that is dripping or has made a spot in the diaper bigger than a half dollar. If the baby has not had a wet diaper within 12 hours of being circumcised, you notice any unusual redness, swelling, or foul odor at the surgical site. Also, call your baby's health care provider if the plastic ring from the Plastibel has not dropped off eight days after the circumcision or if the ring has slipped down the shaft of the penis. An uncircumcised penis needs no special care other than keeping the area clean and dry. Do not try to pull the foreskin of the penis back until your baby is older and you have talked with your baby's health care provider. Dress the baby in the same fashion you are comfortable. Keep the room temperature comfortable, not too hot or too cold. Avoid placing your infant in a draft such as in front of a window or fan. Newborn's nails are usually soft and flexible, but can sometimes cause injury to the infant. Because newborns do not yet have control of their movements, they might claw at their face or scratch their eyes. To avoid injury, use an emery file to smooth and trim ragged nails that extend beyond the tip of the finger. Bathe your infant two to three times a week using a mild soap such as Dove or Johnson & Johnson. Wash your infant's face, neck, hands, and bottom daily. It is extremely important to check the temperature of the water to avoid burns to the infant. You can do this by first checking your infant's temperature. Then the temperature of the bathing water should be one to two degrees higher. Never leave your infant alone during bathing. Do not use lotions or oils as the baby's skin is sensitive and might have a reaction. Do not use powders because the infant may inhale the dust. If the baby's bottom becomes red or irritated, you may apply a small amount of A&D ointment or desitin. Keep the area clean and dry. If it does not clear up, notify your pediatrician. Breast enlargement may occur in newborn boys and girls around the third day of life. In the first week, a milky substance, sometimes called witch's milk, may leak from the nipples. This is related to the mother's hormones and goes away within a few days to weeks. Do not massage or squeeze the breast or nipples as this may cause an infection in the breast. For the first few days, weeks at home, you may need to provide care for your infant's umbilical cord stump. If so, just allow the cord to air dry. Roll the diaper down so it does not cover the cord. Clean the cord with water and dry with dry cloth to remove excess moisture. A moist, mucky appearance to the cord is normal. Be observant for redness or drainage from the area. Notify your pediatrician if present. The cord should fall off in about two weeks. There may be a small amount of bleeding after the cord falls off. This is a natural occurrence and should stop. Do not give your baby a tub bath until the cord falls off. You can very easily and accurately check your infant's temperature by using a digital thermometer placed under the arm. When taking the temperature, Make sure the thermometer is placed to the center of the armpit area. If your baby's temperature is low, reposition the thermometer and check again. Is he or she undressed or near a draft? Are his or her hands or feet cool to the touch? If so, wrap in warm blankets and recheck the temperature in 30 minutes after dressed appropriately removed from draft, and an extra blanket is applied. 
If the temperature continues to be low under the arm, notify your pediatrician. If your baby's temperature is high, is he or she overdressed? Is the room too hot or is he or she too close to the heat source? Recheck the temperature in 30 minutes after the baby is dressed appropriately and distance from the heat source. If temperature continues to be high, notify your pediatrician. The following are concerns to share with your pediatrician. So please call if your baby vomits more than twice in an eight hour period, your infant has loose or watery stools called diarrhea, your infant's temperature is too low or too high, if your infant's skin appears yellow or blue in color, if your infant is not having any wet diapers, if your infant begins eating poorly, not taking minimum amount in 30 minutes, if you notice white patches on the tongue or cheek of your infant that does not go away with gentle wiping, if your infant is breathing fast or having difficulty getting a breath, if you have difficulty waking up your infant to eat, or any change or difference that is not normal for your baby. Should an emergency occur, call 911 and begin the steps of infant CPR if necessary. The signs of dehydration that you need to look for are your baby feels cold to the touch, your baby's mouth and nose are dry, your baby does not have tears when he or she cries. Your baby is irritable or hard to wake up. Your baby is not urinating at least six times a day. Call your pediatrician if you notice any of these symptoms. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that infants be placed on their backs to sleep. The sleep area should be empty. Only a firm mattress with a fitted sheet. Do not use pillows, blankets, or toys in your infant's sleep area. These objects pose a safety risk for SIDS. Never allow your infant to sleep with you. This is called co-bedding. Co-bedding increases the risk of SIDS in infants. Protecting your child from exposure to tobacco smoke also helps protect him or her against SIDS. In your home, make sure your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are working properly and are present on each level of your house. Check each monthly for continued safety precautions. Protect your baby from tobacco smoke, which affects the infant's respiratory system and increases their risk for SIDS. People who smoke that might be caring for the infant should wash hands frequently and possibly place a blanket barrier between them and the newborn to limit the transfer of tobacco chemicals. Protect your child from injuries that might result from a fall by never leaving your child unattended on a bed, sofa, or other high surface. Visitors and outings should be limited, as infants under two months of age have not developed the ability to fight infection. To reduce the risk of illness and or infection, wash hands frequently. While your child is an infant, you may need to suction their nose or mouth area. To use your suction bulb, depress the bulb then place at the opening of the nose and release gently. Express any mucus onto a tissue. Repeat as needed. If you need to suction the mouth, after depressing the suction bulb, point it toward the cheek area, then release gently. Suctioning should be done gently. Clean the bulb with warm soapy water after each use. 
Rinse until warm water runs clear from the bulb. Squeeze out all excess water and suspend the bulb with tip down in a glass until dry. Infants should always be placed in an approved car seat, rear facing in the back seat when riding in an automobile. Please refer to your owner's manual for safety ratings, installation, and weight limits. The infant should remain in the rear facing car seat until he or she is at least one year old and 20 pounds and it is recommended the infant remain rear facing until two years old. Never place your car seat in front of an airbag. If the airbag deployed, the force hitting the car seat could harm the infant. Supplemental car seat accessories are not recommended. These items pose a safety hazard. Be familiar with your car seat prior to discharge. Read the manual and practice with the safety straps. When discharge is nearing, please bring your car seat to the hospital. Remember, car seats do expire. Check the expiration date prior to using. You will be given a new beginning handbook as part of your written home care discharge instructions. This handbook has educational information related to your postpartum care, breastfeeding, bottle feeding, and caring for your newborn baby. Refer to this handbook as needed. Prior to discharge, your infant will have a hearing screen test and a newborn screening. The newborn screening checks your infant for different metabolic disorders. Any follow-up that is needed after discharge will be done by your pediatrician. Should you receive a letter from the state of Tennessee regarding this test, please follow up with your pediatrician. All parents are encouraged to take cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR classes. To find out about classes given by Jackson Madison County General Hospital, call 541-6448. We also have infant CPR instruction on Your Room TV channel 16 at 1.05 p.m. in English, 1.30 p.m. in Spanish, 10.05 p.m. in English, and 10.30 p.m. in Spanish. On the day of discharge, your baby's pediatrician may instruct you to follow up with weight check in one to two days and then well baby check in two weeks. It is very important to call and make these appointments with your baby's primary care provider. If you ever have any questions or concerns regarding the care and safety for your child, call your pediatrician. Congratulations again and thank you for allowing us to care for your son or daughter. If you still have questions after viewing this video, please do not hesitate to ask your nurse. <music>